Let's get you all the business news now. And the benchmark indices declined through Friday to close the week and the day on a lower note. Majority of the sectoral indices were trading lower except pharma and private banks which were marginally higher. Hiral Dadia is here with the wrap of all the market action. Second consecutive session of weakness is what we saw in terms of where markets go. And clearly, we've ended the week on a lower note as well. And this is in spite of Sensex actually getting a life high level, a record high level this week. Overall, we ended below the 63,000 mark on the Sensex, whereas on the Nifty, we were below the 18,700 levels. In fact, pretty much close to 18,650 in trade today. Uh, Bank Nifty, though we ended with cuts, but it outperformed the benchmark indices in trade. And from other sectors, you had mainly metals and the consumer uh, durables that declined the most. If you see in terms of broader markets, both mid-cap and the small-cap index ended with cuts of little over or nearly a percent each. And from a weekly perspective, a 12-week gaining streak is what both the indices actually snapped in trade. Let's quickly look at the movers and shakers and the top gainers in trade today. Uh, the advanced decline ratio was in favor of the bears, but in terms of the gainers, you have the likes of an Indicent Bank, Dr. Reddy's Asian Paints, Bharti Airtel, as well as uh, NTPC. And stocks like Bharti, HDFC, Twins and Asian Paints supported the markets, whereas the likes of Adani Enterprises, Infosys were the ones that actually took the markets lower. Apart from that, in terms of the losers, you had BPCL, Hindalco, DV, Sadani Enterprises and Ports. Newsmakers, you had Dr. Eddie's, we already spoke about Lupin, uh, was in focus on the back of the epilepsy seizure control drug that they launched in the USA. Uh, Ratan India Power saw some smart moves as credit uh, uh, fund has, in, quota credit fund has invested 732 crores. Uh, landmark cars jumped in trade after the promoter sold 1.39% stake. Uh, UPL is looking to hive off the speciality chemical business and raise $500 million by, you know, divesting minority stakes in subsidiaries. Aether was in focus after the QIP announcement saw pressure. Sriram was upgraded by Jefferies. Orchid Pharma rose the most after the QIP announcement. Saragama, though they got the NCLT approval for the deep merger of the e-commerce business, was trading under pressure. And on the back of an order win, BEML was in focus and some distilleries on the back of Carlsberg starting production. So clearly a lot of newsmakers in trade today, a day or heavy with, you know, stock specific action, but markets clearly have been weak for a uh, week for this uh, week itself. Back to you. Now, global IT bellwether Accenture's latest earnings failed to meet expectations. Moreover, the company lowering revenue guidance for FY23 came as a disappointment. Will this have a negative impact on Indian IT? Tushar joins in with the details. Accenture's latest revenue guidance has pushed Indian IT closer to the brink. Three months ago, the world's largest IT company had guided for 9 to 10% revenue growth in its fiscal ending August 2023. In comparison, Infosys guide for 4 to 7% growth, HCL Tech 6 to 8%, and Wipro is staring at degrowth in Q1 FI24. That was in March. Things have changed a lot since, since then. Accenture has now revised lower its revenue growth guidance to 8 to 9%. Its later quarterly earnings isn't likely to soothe either. That has three negative takeaways for Indian IT firms. One, the sharp moderation in Accenture's bookings, not only in consulting but also in outsourcing, suggests rising scrutiny on IT spends. Two, there is pricing pressure in a shrinking deal-making pie, which in turn is a drag on margins. And three, Accenture's muted outlook for the North American market, as well as for its communications vertical, offers negative read-through for Infosys, HCL Tech, and Tech Mahindra. So what's next? Brokerages are showing red flags. JP Morgan says all of FI24 is going to be a washout for NIT. Jefferies has warned of a worsening demand scenario for the sector. And Nirmalban believes that even FI25 is at risk now. Clearly, a turnaround for Indian IT isn't likely anytime soon. Maybe AI, where they are investing heavily, may provide a breakthrough. After seeing a stellar run last week, sugar rallies hit the pause today and sugar stocks such as Sri Renuka Sugars, Bajaj Hindustan, Dalmia Sugars and uh, Balrampur Chini, which were trading near their 52-week highs, witnessed a steep fall in trade. But the fears over a decline in production of sugar cane on the back of weak monsoon uh, still persist to address this mounting concern. We spoke to Sri Renuka Sugars, Atul Chaturvedi. Listen in. The rains have been there reasonably all across in the last couple of months, so which has also hampered logistics. This has resulted in 
white sugar prices moving northwards. And you see uh, London touching something like $700. And that is getting reflected in the world values. As far as India is concerned, India exported about 6.1 or 6.2 million tons of sugar, and which is what the level was at which the government capped all the exports and largely to protect the domestic market. As far as the Indian domestic market is concerned, it actually does not mirror the international scenario in totality. But in sympathy with the world values, Indian values have also moved uh, a bit. I won't say fully, but uh, maybe in the last couple of months, we've seen prices inching up by about almost something like 2 rupees a kilo or something like 2,000 rupees a ton. So that is mana from the heaven as far as the Indian sugar sector is concerned. And that is getting reflected uh, in likely to get reflected in improved earnings in this off-season months. And plus the talk of El Nino and all, whatever we are listening to, that is also contributing towards some price increases. And summer months are generally the period when the sugar values move a little northwards as far as India is concerned. But they are still not mineraling the world values. The Indian Railways has signed a pact with the U.S. Agency for International Development. The deal is expected to focus on the expansion of clean energy solutions and promote e-mobility. This is also considered a stepping stone towards the railway's zero carbon emission dream. The Memorandum of Understanding signed between the parties aims to incorporate clean energy sources into Indian railways operations. Now remember, this comes at a time when Prime Minister Modi is in the U.S. meeting the businessmen and leaders to strengthen trade ties. And keeping it uh, with railways, Rail Vikas Nigam has backed three orders from Chennai Metro and currently has an order book of 57,000 crore with a mix of nominations and bidding. We spoke to RVNL's Rajesh Prasad about the ambitious plans uh, the company is looking forward to. Suppose we are targeting a revenue of 22,000 crores, we should have an order book of 66,000 crores. Presently, we are having an order book of 57,000 crores and we have got a very ambitious plan of... Uh, uh, having the order book of 75,000 crores to 1 lakh crores. So we, we should be able to achieve down the line after one year, you will see that, uh, yes, we are uh, having this kind of order book. And we have got the competency, we have changed the model. And in a government company, it is not that easy and we have molded ourselves. And we say that we are highly flexible, uh, we are efficient and uh, uh, the, we, have, we are diversifying. And we are a vibrant young company, so, uh, so you can understand that uh, this particular company is different than other PSUs and the private sectors. And uh, we have got a very uh, uh, good reason to move forward and move forward, move onward. The center has amended the electricity bill 2020. According to the new bill, you will have to shell out up to 20% more for electricity during peak hour. But on the bright side, quite literally, during solar hours will provide you relief. During solar hours, the cost of power will come down by 10 to 20%. Now, this will come into effect for the public at large from 2025. But it will be applicable to commercial users with a maximum demand of 10 kilowatt from April next year. The agricultural users have been exempted. Energy Minister R.K. Singh has said that the move will help consumers reduce their electricity bills. According to the minister, the mechanism will ensure faster energy transition for India. The rate hike uh, cycle has reached its peak, says Avender Sparks, Ganesh Ram, uh, Jay Raman. While speaking to BQ Prime, Sajid Manga, the market expert, said the concerns around growth still persist as we are still in the high interest scenario. He also believes that the rate cycle might not come down for the next 12 to 18 months. We are working with the principal or primary, primary assumption that interest rates are very close to the peak or have peaked. Okay, Inflation due to MSP increase, they can go up a little bit, but if demand weakens, that can also get uh, addressed a bit. But also keep in mind the whole industry consolidation point I said, and due to which even if WPI is kind of moderating, I think CPI will remain on the higher side, okay? So, so pricing power will also be an important point kept in mind. But to cut the long story short, uh, Closer to the peak than the peak is our key call. Not the peak, but closer to the peak. Uh, 
so so uh, but what matters is growth it's not interest rate cycle which we are more concerned about now it's growth what happens to growth after after all the the spike in interest rates that we have seen over the last 12 18 months what happens to growth the initial period the consumers corporates they have absorbed it because there was so much liquidity prior to this you know after covid started and all these maybe even years before you had absorbed liquidity uh, that was a buffer with the consumers hands right but but from here on we are at uh, we are at crossroads okay and we will it, if interest rates don't come down and our view is uh, the interest rate differentials between india and us are so narrow that um, india will not see rate cycle coming down in the next 12 18 months also unless demand capitulates which is not our base case that we don't we think demand can moderate cap it for it to see a sharp fall in demand uh, at that stage rate cycle can come down but otherwise we will continue to see a rate cycle pretty much where it is today in india and that's a round up of all the business news